How's it going guys? Uh, today I'm just putting up a little bit of fur, putting up some raccoon. So uh, I figured I'd throw up a video on how I flush some of these. This will probably be a 2x coon here so I figured I'd use a decent sized one. Normally during trapping season what I do is uh, I'll, as I'm trapping I'll just skin them and then I will just uh, throw them all in the freezer and then once I'm about done I'll start pulling them out in batches and getting them put up. Uh, this isn't going to be, you know, try to be the fastest I do it. You know, I'm just going to take my time and this is just a real time uh, flushing of a raccoon. So here we go. This is just a, a Freedom brand flushing beam and a Necker 600 is what I'm using if it matters. Doesn't really matter. All I say is get a get a decent beam and a decent knife and figure it out. So here we go. Normally, uh, I just go around the ears here. You know, there's a lot of meat right here on the around the ears. So we're gonna take that off. And uh, you know, I really don't worry about the face too much because when I skin it, it, most of it comes off. But uh, we're just gonna start peeling that away there. You know, there's no sense in getting in a big hurry because if you start putting holes in it, then it ain't worth nothing. So uh, just take your time. You know, once you get it uh, started, it should peel off rather easy. And uh, you don't want, if it's not coming off, don't sit there and just keep trying to push it and push it. You'll burn that hide and them hairs will start slipping. So if you get hung up, just kind of take your sharp side and, you know, you just. You know, I'm self-taught by YouTube basically on how to put up furs. I, uh, you know, it's just something you know you gotta work at and get used to it. I get it about work down to the arms there. You know, I'll flip him around, do the other side. You want to keep that pelt stretched tight on that beam while you're doing this. You don't want it to be getting bound up under itself or you'll be getting some cuts there. And see that's an old wound right there. I almost opened it up. You gotta watch that. You know, you can take too much off in some spots. So you just gotta kind of see what you're working with and run with it. I noticed keeping my blade uh, the blade edge here nice and clean really helps or you'll be fighting it. See I just kind of get that started there and I'll flip her over and just push her down. And then I'll flip it onto the stomach, get this little strip. You know, and on the stomach, you really don't need a sharp side. You just, a lot of it, you're just pushing it with this dull side, basically. Unless you get hung up. But the back, which we're about to do now, is normally the, the it's the toughest part. I always use the sharp side on it. And if I put a hole in it, this is probably where I'm gonna do it because I get a little wild, but uh, I'm just gonna try to take her easy and uh, see what happens. See that's where I, from when I dispatched it there. So uh, I ain't really worried about that. And see I'm not cutting at it like this. I got my knife at a slight angle and I'm using like a slicing stroke. I know there's a lot of different methods, you know, there's a million different ways to skin a cat, but I noticed that's what works best for me. And then once you get it worked down so far, it will push. You know, and don't be afraid of it, guys. You know, sometimes you do got to put a little elbow grease in it. But once you get it started, for the most part, everything comes right off rather easy. 
cut them arms a little short. So I gotta be careful on that. And see, that's another thing you guys gotta be careful is around the nipples. You don't wanna pop them. Cause that'll put a hole in it too. There's a little bit under that armpit still. Normally I have the radio cranked with on some KC <clears throat> KC 95 listening to some rock music, but I wanted you guys to hear me talk, so uh, yeah, I definitely advise having music going. I'm not out here talking to yourself like a crazy person, but uh, like I said, I've seen where people have been wanting to know more about putting up fur, mainly fleshing it. So, uh, I figure what the hell I'm doing it anyway, might as well bust the camera out and show you guys how I do it at least. You know, let's just do coyotes the same way. Fox, you really have to, you have to be careful with them because they're kind of a thin-skinned animal. You don't want to take too much off of them. You leave the saddle on them like you would a mink and muskrat. At least I do. And you hear that popping, that's them nipples. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Being careful trying not to pop them. But that's uh, that weird noise. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but that's going across. But once you get so far down, guys, I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff just pushes right off. Normally, yeah, I don't really worry too much about up in between, like in here if it's a bore, because you know a lot of that will be getting cut off for the inspection window. But you know, you got it on the beam already. You might as well try to get all you can get where you need to. And once you guys start figuring out, you can figure out where uh, you know where you can leave some fat. I definitely advise putting down some plastic or a board or something on the floor and have somewhere to put all this fat because these coons are messy. Let me tell you. I always eat supper a couple hours before I do this just because I want to be able to eat at night. And uh, I was leaving that back with. See, I kind of got off track talking and forgot some up here on the back. Get that worked down. But, uh, yeah, you definitely want to eat before you do this because you won't want to eat afterwards. At least I don't. This doesn't really make me too hungry. So you guys, like I said, a lot of this just works down and you want to make sure you have your tail split when you get to it because if you don't well you're going to split it and see I got my tail split so I'll just run that on down there and there's a little bit of stuff in there still You want to be careful here you don't pop your tail off because they will, especially on the fox. I learned that out the hard way whenever I was younger. Put up and went to flesh a fox and popped the tail right off of it. Boy, it was a beautiful cherry red too. But that's how you learn. And that's how it's done. That's how I do it at least. Nice, fresh, clean coon. I'm gonna get him washed up. Show you the, a little bit of the fur on him. He was a pretty coon. Like I said, he'll probably be a 2X. So uh, we'll get him washed up and dried up and on the stretcher. I might uh, do a little video on how I board him. I don't know yet. So uh, I don't know. If I do, stay tuned, guys.
All right, guys, uh, I figured I'd just put a short clip on the end of this fleshing video on how I uh, handle my furs, basically. Uh, you know, whenever I first started, I wanted to get a little system down to where I can repetitively do it and, you know, everything turn out the same. So uh, I'll just kind of give you a rundown of how I do things and, you know, you can develop your own system. There's a million different ways you can do it, but this is what works for me. So, uh, Anyway, we got our coon flushed out there. I uh, put them in five gallon buckets of water and I let them soak for just a little bit and kind of stir them around. And uh, then I rinse them out with some clean water and I snap them dry. You know, I always wait until I'm done fleshing them to wash them just because I feel like, you know, fleshing them's a pretty, you know, that's pretty nasty really. There's a lot of grease and fat all over. So I try to get everything off that I can. So that's why I wait until after I'm done fleshing to wash them. But uh, anyway, like I said, we've got our furs washed up. I'm going to let them hang there overnight just to kind of dry the fur because uh, you don't want to board wet fur. just doesn't dry right. And by the, you know, by the time they get her turned around, that fur looks like crap because it dried while it was wet. But uh, after... Tomorrow morning I'll come out here and I'll kind of brush them out a little bit and then uh, they'll be pretty dry by then. So after that I'll flip them inside out and I'll put them on those boards there. I'll put them on there and uh, you know drying time really depends on where you're at. Here I normally let them dry anywhere from about a week to uh, 10 days you know anywhere in there. If I don't have any more fur to put on them I'll leave them on there. Um, there's a couple coyotes there that I got drying they uh you, I, like I said I just wanted to put a little video on obviously after they're dry you can take them off the board and hang them up and until you're ready to sell them there's a few fox and some coyotes and muskrats and coon and mink there that I got so uh like I said I just figured I'd throw this video up here to help the newer people try to you know just try to get a little system down or even the older guys you know you know you learn something new every day so as long as this helps one person out i'm happy but uh till next video guys take it easy and happy trapping